Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Summer Racing Freedom 500. Right now we're here with our drivers for the Freedom 500 and uh, we're getting ready to rip off a 100 lap endurance race with 19 yeah! feet. Exactly, dude. Travis Pastrana, that's just an example of how with NOS Nitro Systems on them, brand new Nitto tires, and we have one Toyota Camry. Ryan Turk's driving that. We'll see how we'll see how far he makes it, folks. So uh, a couple things, you know, I just want to thank Summit Racing for sponsoring the show. The staff, you know, out here running the pay-per-view, the Freedom Factory guys, incredible. They've all done an amazing job. Yeah, the hell yeah. Especially, uh, got to give a plug to Josh, Alec, and Ryan, man. Those guys have been working like crazy here at the Freedom Factory. So. And Alan, and my boy Alan. So... And then thank you to you guys for coming because obviously, you know, this race is, you know, no one's here for anything. It's not like you can win a million bucks, even though someone might have heard that on the internet. This is like a total fun bragging rights race, and you guys are going out of your way to come do this with us. So thank you so much, and uh, hope the Crown Vicks hold it down for you today. So that's the goal. Uh, and thanks to the fans, dude. We got fans at the Freedom Factory, which is exciting, and all the people on the pay-per-view, you know. It's huge. We're, you guys are what brought this track back to life. So, thanks so much. But uh, let's get into the driver's meeting. A couple things you need to know. These Crown Vicks weigh like 4,500 pounds. So, the goal is, if you're in a crash, let's not hit driver's doors. You know what I'm saying? Let's just aim for, uh, you know, obviously there's going to be a couple of crashes. But I think with this field of drivers, it's going to be so fast and probably a lot cleaner than our last couple races. But if you do get into a scurry, you know, let's try and not hit driver's doors. You know what I'm saying? I probably shouldn't tell you guys this, but we have six, five or six, six spare vehicles. So if for some reason your car gets totaled or just breaks down early on, we do have some spares. You can only get one spare. So if you, if you actually crash two cars and there's still a spare left, you don't deserve a third. So, <laughs> a couple things you need to know as a driver, okay? You cannot modify your cars to make them any faster. I'm talking to Chelsea Denofa here. Chelsea last time adjusted his alignment, but still lost. So, <laughs> no adjusting the cars in any way, shape, or form, please. The tire pressures are all set. The cars are all set. Uh, you know, they all have an equal nitrous jet in them. It, everything should be set so that it's an even field of cars. Minus the Camry, we have no idea what that's going to do. But please, everybody, leave your car alone. No weight reduction, nothing of the sort. Just leave it. Make it look cool, but please leave it alone. Uh, and then remember to turn on your nitrous bottles, okay? All the bottles are shut because the nitrous will slowly leak out. If you want to use your nitrous in qualifying, go ahead. But... Make sure you turn it on before the main race because you're going to be kind of pissed when you hit your nitrous and nothing comes on. And then the little lights on the trunk are actually, those light up when you hit your nitrous. Just a little indicator to the other drivers. You're using your nitrous. So qualifying, this is how this works. So the actual race starts around like 7.15. Qualifying, we're doing at 6 p.m. sharp. Reason I say sharp is because we got to be dialed in. We got a freaking super Takano. A29 attack plane flying over to buzz the, the track after the national anthem. So, yeah, yeah, dude. Shout out to Sierra Nevada Corporation for helping make that happen. So that's going to be really tricky. Honestly, I have no idea what we're doing, but we're going to radio to it with the helicopter we got parked over there. Hopefully all goes to plan. Uh, but 6 p.m., basically, we're going to pull you guys out. The first group's got to be ready at 5.50 and then each group to follow. The way it works is you'll go out. We'll have a caution lap. There's four cars on track at a time, so kind of spread out because once they green flag you, you're going to do two hot laps, two hot laps. That's all you get, and in that time, you're going to set one of your fastest, one of the two laps to be faster than the other, and that does the driver's order for the start of the race. We're doing a two-wide field, so anytime we're under caution, we're two wide, not three wide, not one wide, two wide under all cautions, and... I think that's pretty much it for qualifying, right? Any, is, that, is that kind of dialing in? Oh, yeah, and then after your two laps, we'll slow you down and we'll help you exit. If you, oh, yeah, 
and you'll all have radios. We're going to give you guys all a radio transponder and some headphones. Unless you have your own headphones, you can run those. But we'll have a little bit of communication with it. Usually we get about half the drivers actually can communicate. So that's good. Uh, here's the deal. If you're in a crash or like say you just get – say you spin out because you suck at driving and you end up in the infield and we stay green – Stay down in the infield. Don't try. Well, here's it, it all depends. Like it's your discretion. But if you can make it back out cleanly, like the pack is gone, you know, you can pull out. But most most likely if you have a flat tire or something like that, stay in the infield, just out on the concrete pad in the center. And then we'll go into a caution at some point and we'll pull you out. There's going to be guys right over the hill right here by this blue shop. All you got to do is pull up. You don't even got to get out. They're going to change your tires, whatever it takes, or they're going to say, dude, your car is destroyed. Hop out. We're going to put you in a spare. Are we going to exit crash for that right here? Or yeah. yeah, yeah, you'll exit right here. This is the one and only entrance and exit. So you'll pull out under caution. We'll uh, just come over the hill slowly. Please don't bomb the hill because there will be people working. And uh, we'll get your tires changed, dude, some fresh nittos, and we'll put you back out there, you know? Uh, let's see. <laughs> Travis will let you pre-paint a car because it's likely you're going to use it, dude. <laughs> uh, oh, here's the thing with caution. We always, we have this problem because a lot of these guys are not circle track racers. Obviously we've got a couple NASCAR guys, some really good circle track racers, but some of us haven't raced. Is anyone who's never raced oval in their life? Yeah, we got a couple drag racers, drifters that have never raced oval in your life. So when we're under yellow, right, there's no passing. Whatever position you are in, you cannot gain or lose position, right? Yeah, no matter, like, what – I don't know. What if someone's a lap down and they're leading the pack and we go into a caution? We're just going to leave them in position. You'll stick them tail? Okay. So he's going to be – He's running the race, and he might stick you tail. So if we're under caution and he points a flag at you and tells you to go back a pack, that'll be that. But you should know if you're down a lap. So kind of be aware of that. And uh, we'll just put you – we'll have communication. So you might come on and be like, driver, car number five, whatever, go to the back. But, but if you're down a lap and you want to, you know, All right. battle with someone else who's down cheer, a lap, cheer. cool. But don't mess okay. up the leaders of the race. If you're oh, down man, a lap, a you know, that's this. just, right. that's just bad racing. You know, you gotta let the leaders okay. run. So, All right. Qualifying group. Yeah. Hold on. So basically the way it works is the inside car like would like, say there's a field of two rows, right? The inside we'll car would be most. pole position. Okay, the outside right. car would be second. Who's so when we go into caution, if you're in a line of cars, the guy you're behind, if there's an open spot on his right, you can go up next to him. Okay, so then we'll bunch up under caution. That's when crew. it gets really rowdy. Tanner uh, essentially, when you're under yellow, we'll oh, be going yeah. and we'll do our Carter laps. Nova? The uh, the van will pull right. off track. Alex right? Bowman. And then, do you normally shut the okay, caution light off? The yeah. NASCAR, He'll shut the Chelsea caution lights Denova? off. You'll see him around the track. And then that means There's that right. next Vice time around, garage. we're going to go green. And Dude, the way that oh, works, oh, are we doing okay. the flag wave or are we going to do the box start? From side by side blog. Okay, so here's how it's going to work. If we're under yellow, you're going to see oh, the yellow lights shut off. As we're coming around, that means the next lap Jackson, we're going to go green. So Jimmy. somewhere when we're on turn four, you'll see two yellow lines. He is going to give a signal from the flag stand, green flag, Randy Pope. live action begins again. Don't yeah. jump the starts. I mean, Kevin we allow it a little bit, KSR you know, because I'm not going to lie. I'm guilty of it, too, because everyone yeah. starts to do it. Brent but, you know, just PFI be cautious of that. Another note, Crown Vicks, dude. Nice, They're transmissions. Nice. Some of the stoutest Dirt. units ever built. Crown Vicks are like the tank of the road. Oh, yeah, oh, yeah. But if you leave your car and drive All the right. whole race Heavy D. and let it shift every corner, it's probably not going to make the whole Ray. race. So once you're going, you want to be in second the whole time anyway. Your boy if you're cleared. in second, the car is like a second faster than if you All let right, it shift. That's so that's run cheating. second the whole time you're going. Whistling diesel. But then don't catch yourself on the restart. You got to go back Strong, down to first dude. and then back diesel up to second. Dave. Ryan, I don't know what you're going to do in the camera. Oh, yeah. Haley Deegan. So, yeah, run in second gear oh, or you'll yeah. end up just killing the transmission. Dude, and then, uh, okay, so. We're gonna you know what's a really good trick is all the air conditioning in these cars work. So under caution, we always blast the AC earlier. too. Like you can do that. Each car gets the uh, opportunity to make two frick, honestly, if we get it oiled down, we're probably gonna leave it. 
if First if someone wrecks, LG, you know, Blake we're gonna get him out of their car. We got a loader. We're gonna snag that, snatch that puppy up and keep running. So, uh, the really the only thing we're gonna penalize drivers for is jumping the caution, and turning a car like unnecessary. You know, like if you turn a car up into the wall, for sure you're getting penalized. So that means a pit maneuver from the the tall high side of the rear end of the car. If you turn them up into the wall, we could have a really nasty accident. So, I mean, there's going to be racing where guys end up getting spun, but if you come down on somebody in the corner and it looks clean and it is what it is, that guy will call it, but he's pretty lenient. It's just one of those things. We don't want – end of the day, we're racing freaking Crown Vicks, so we don't want anybody to get hurt. So, you know, play that into here. Uh, put your belts tight as hell because the seats are horrible in these cars. They're horrible. I actually had seats ordered. Chelsea helped me get seats, but they, they arrive in about two hours. So the freight got messed up, dude. You know, the guy got stuck in that canal, and here we are. Uh, so put your seats tight. You're going to be riding like this in the seat the whole time. Your arms will get wore out unless it's tight. But that's I think that's all I got for the driver's stuff. What's that? Oh, yeah, you can hit the pace car. If someone spins the pace car out, I we might give them a bonus lap. Like, it's full, totally fair game on rubbing with the pace car. I mean, my friend JH is driving it, so I'm all for it. But the only problem is his bumper is your height with your radiator, so that's just something you'll have to be cautious of. What's that? Like 10 to go. Yeah, yeah. So our scoreboard broke. Scoreboard's fixed. <laughs> and so we will, we will, nice job. We will be able to see the laps on it. Some of the digits, you know, they don't work the cleanest. I'm not going to be honest. So it's like, it may say 80 laps and it looks like 60 laps, but when it comes to the end, he's going to be holding up 10 to go. Well, he'll tell us, you know, halfway, 10 to go, five to go, white flag, checkered flag. So... Does anybody have any questions as far as like flag? If you have a black flag waving and pointing at you, you obviously are doing something wrong. You got to get off. Or if you have a flat tire, you got to get off. So we got to change your tire because it just, you're going to go so slow and it's going to wreck the track, which the track's in pretty bad shape. So it's not that big of a deal. What else? Anything else? Are we dialed? Ladies and gentlemen, prepare yourselves. We got qualifying coming up. You guys got a little bit of time. Go ahead, decorate your cars. Everyone keep an eye on Chelsea. No one, no one modify their cars in any way, shape, or form. And uh, we'll freaking do this. So thank you, guys. Oh, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Right here, this lovely lady is our is doing all the timing equipment, right? So she's in, in charge of the whole race as far as lap timers, things like that. All the cars already have transponders on them. Uh, go over to her. She has a race receiver that you can plug your headphones into, or she'll supply you with a set. And that is how we will communicate. The, the flag stand can literally talk to us in our ears and tell us certain communications. It's good to have. But uh, she, yeah, she's down there now, so go ahead, guys. But thank you guys so much. Freedom 500 is going to be a ripper. Let's do it. I think Alan, Alan might have a couple other things. Real quick, guys. The uh, 645 getting the cars out in qualified order will happen. If you're not there, you go to the back. So, so we're really, because of the broadcast, hard, hard times. So uh, be ready. And uh, uh, Spencer, go ahead. Really, really quick, too. Hey, there's food in the back of this white Audi right here. If anybody wants Jimmy John's, we got a bunch of food left over. It's probably like 20. Yeah, and then there's drinks right here. So I would suggest grabbing some water for your car. All right, guys, you heard it here. That concludes our driver's meeting for number two on the Freedom 500. So let's go take a walk, Chris. We're going to take a look at the field. All you guys at home, we're going to kind of do some browsing and just kind of see what some of the colorful paint jobs that we've got going on.
Got a lot of racers out here decorating their units. What's up, dude? Get your bunny ears off my guy. All right, we got Kevin from KSR Performance. What's up, buddy? How you doing, man? You're a last second alternative, right? Yeah, thank goodness we're in the show. Yeah. Uh, was want to do a little better than I did the last one, even though I did pretty well the last one until right at the very end. So now, how did you finish in the last one? I don't even know. I, I led the most laps of the second half, set the fastest lap of the entire race, and then spun out three times with two laps to go. So. And that was at Les Mullets, right? Yes, yes, Les Mullets. The first Freedom 500 for me. So. Okay. All right, perfect. So you have a little bit more experience than some of the drivers out here. You think that's going to come in to play some advantage for you today? I have no idea. There's, some, uh, there's an awesome group of drivers in this one, so it's going to be tough. Very tough this race. So Yeah, well, you're pretty humble, but I do know that you're a very good driver. So I think you're a little bit of a sleeper. So you might not have some big name behind you, no X Games gold medals or anything. But um, we'll see you out there, man. Good luck. Appreciate it. Have a good one. Thank you, Kevin. KSR. Let's see what we got going on back here. Is this still, you getting good audio off this? Yeah, just not, don't go near the mouth. Okay. Like whatsoever. 10-4. Taylor Ray, how you doing, bud? I'm good. Dude, what do you got here? What do you got going on with this? Well, I thought gold would be nice, so I painted it gold, and uh, now it's gold. And what are you trying to go for, like Prince Alexander the Great or something? Sure, whatever you think is best. <laughs> you, Listen, I'm just going what it looks like, but it's very shiny. It, it stands out. That's the goal. It stands out. This is good paint, dude. This Walmart special, whoo. It laid over thick. I mean, you would think that I got this professionally painted, wouldn't you? Tell me. Yeah, you know, you're going to put Mako out of business. You keep this up. I think so. I think I'm going to start my own shop. Hey, man. Well, you got your own shop coming on your channel. Things are going really good. I saw your, your Fummins, the Cummins Swap Ford F350. That thing's looking good, man. It's been doing good. I'm happy with it. Oh, well. Good, man. We're happy to have you back here. I know you've raced here before. You've done really well. That's why you keep securing a spot in these next so races, good. man. It feels so good to, to have a spot to be able to race in this. This is the most fun thing you could ever do. Well, to be honest, I mean, I think you just keep the fans happy, dude. Like, it's awesome to see you actually going out there. You're giving your all. You're not screwing around. You're not crashing people. You're trying to put some heater laps down. You're trying to catch a victory. So you finished in the pole position or in the uh, top three before, haven't you? Yeah, yeah. I got third the first race. I led a bit of it, most of it. And then the second race we led, me and Kevin, and then he got spun at the end. So we've had a we have had a record, I and him, of uh, getting spun short or, or getting losing first right before the end. Yeah. So I gotta try not to do that this time if I even get to first. But we got a stacked field of drivers. Yeah. Yeah, right when it matters most you guys fell short. So sorry to make it sound so brutal, but I think you guys got a better shot today. What number are you, man? Number oh seven. Number oh seven. Number but they put a zero for some reason. I don't know why they put the zero, but it's just seven. It's just seven. <laughs> I don't know, dude. That mind behind the camera is the one that printed the decals. Why? <laughs> just a seven. Just a seven. All right. Look who I got behind me right here. Ryan Turk, you're not getting out of here too fast, buddy. We have to interview the only guy that's not in an actual Crown Vic. So give us the story. Explain to the fans why you're in a Toyota right now. Yeah, so... Uh, Toyota supports my drifting efforts professionally and a, and a big portion of my career. So uh, I had to ask for permission to drive a Vic, and uh, they didn't want they didn't want to see me in a Vic. I understand. I hope everybody else understands. Like this is a fun race, but there are a lot of eyeballs on it, so it is a. It's, there's a lot yeah. going on. No, it's very understandable, but we appreciate you doing everything that you've made commitments before, but the fact that you still were able to get it done, you're willing to, to, to go Ro Rochambeau into Camry. Uh, all right, so what is kind of transmission? Do you even have a gears or anything? You're gonna... I, got a, I got a D3-2 in there, so <laughs> okay. I'm probably just going to leave it in two yeah. and uh, see what happens. So what motor is under this, though? Is it a 3.5-liter 24-valve uh, VTEC engine? And uh, we do have the nitrous on this, too. Uh, now it's a dry shot with no fuel management and no extra fuel going in. <laughs> so I don't know how that 40, that 45 shot or whatever is going to uh, distribute between the cylinders, but yeah. uh, I, I'm nervous about it. Well, man, I definitely is safe to say that I think you might have a little bit of a target on your back being the old, only non-crown Vic. And it's, and it's red, but it looks good, dude. This paint job came out great. The stickers look good. What number are you? I'm 411. I think, the, I think it did came out good. I just want to um, say a massive thank you to uh, Cletus for, you know, Garrett for bringing me out here and actually making this happen because uh, obviously he didn't have to. And uh, pleasure to be here and race with everybody. It should be a good time. Awesome, man. Well, thanks for coming out. We appreciate having you. I like the Ronald McDonald color scheme you got going on. Um, but, dude, I hope I don't see you in the pits interviewing you far too soon before the race is over. All right. Yeah, absolutely. All right, Ryan, we'll see you out there. All right, we got to get over here, guys.
One of the drivers we've all been waiting for. I'm feeling great, man. TP199 <laughs> in the middle. TP199 out here at the track. Let's go talk some smack to him. Let's see what he's got going on. What's up? What's going on, man? Nitro button is. Bro, it's on the steering wheel. Oh, yeah, right <laughs> it's right there, right there. <laughs> He's at the radio controls, at the AC knob. Guys, this gentleman doesn't need much introduction, but we got Travis Pastrana here joining us for his very first appearance at the Freedom 500 at the Freedom Factory. How are you doing, man? I, I have to say, this is the most prestigious event I've pretty much ever competed in. I mean, you look around, it's very hard to get all these drivers in the same same place. And it's probably the lowest horsepower vehicles we've ever all been driving together. Uh, but we have um, nitrous, so that's good. I don't know what the button does, but we're going to find out in qualifying. I'm going to use, use all my nitrous up just to make sure I start first and then block like hell. Yeah, absolutely. Well, that's a good strategy. So you got the go sauce plugged in there, kind of like you were saying last night, man. It's like you had a ton of people hitting you up about this event before you even announced it. And you were telling us yesterday, you're like, I've never seen so many people so jazzed up telling you you got to go be a part of it. So what do you think about this, how it compares to some of the other events you've competed in? No, this is awesome. I actually uh, spent my winters down here riding dirt bikes. Uh, a lot of the guys, Ryan Sipes is coming by. Like All the guys that race moto are all from around here. We were just up up north of Tampa and Dade City. So I um, have a lot of kind of friends from in the motorcycle family around here. A lot of America, a lot of American flags. Love the free, <laughs> I, the Freedom Factory. Like even the, uh, like there's limos that are painted American and there are ambulances that yeah. are painted American. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I got to run the, the quarter mile uh, last last night. Turns out I'm bad at turning left and going straight. <laughs> so thank goodness there's a... Uh... You guys got to head to the Cletus McFarland YouTube channel, watch this guy. This is the sketchiest quarter mile pass I've ever seen in my life. That was the scariest thing. How was it inside the car? Yeah, Ruby, I, I really thought I was better. I just, yeah, I pinned it and then all of a sudden I was taking out cones and going left, so. Yeah, not not my thing. Uh, but uh, yeah, I was excited. Well, awesome. I hope you save some left-hand turns for you today, though, because you got about 100 laps out there. So I know you made jokes about having a backup car, but this thing looks so good, man. You're decked out. You got your Subaru decals, Pit Viper, the 199. That's been standing out for decades in my memory. So I'm happy to see you do well, man. Thanks for coming out. We appreciate it a bunch. Dude, thanks for having me. This is gonna be awesome. So. Yeah. All right, man. Have a good one. Yeah. And the, the stands are already packed. Yeah, no, we had a line outside this place. When drivers were still showing up, we already had people parking on the interstate, off the side of the, in the emergency lane. So it's going to be a great time. People are pumped to see you here, man, and we really appreciate you coming out. Cool. Well, thank you. All right, have a good one, man. Good stuff, TP. All right. Where else are we going? Let's see. Yeah. So this mic, I don't know what's different about this mic this year. But well, I need more distance. You like, really? Here, Max. Here, okay. Because as soon as it gets there, Okay. Go All right, cool. Uh, yeah, last year we had to have it right on people's tonsils. All right. What are you up to? Yeah, in the breast oh, cancer, oh, in, the, oh. in the side by side blog.com breast cancer awareness vehicle, we got. Nick Seuss, how dude, you doing today, bud? Dude, feeling really good today, dude. Feeling good, dude. Going for the win today, straight up, dude. Let me show you something. Hey, Spence, let me yeah, show you something. Yeah, take quick. me for a lap around here. Right here? Whoa. Dude, listen. <laughs> Easy oh, money, dude. Cha-ching. Listen. Cha-ching. Easy money. <laughs> All right, so I don't even know if there's a, a victory purse or anything, but you're going for there's the... There's not, dude. <laughs> I've confirmed it. I thought there was, but there's not, dude. Yeah, you got an email saying there was a million-dollar grand prize, and then you found out in the driver's classic, meeting, not the case. Classic spam, dude. Classic spam. <laughs> Those spam emails that get you every time. Give me a walk around the car, man. It's yeah, a full dude, so, pink yeah, full kitten pink, caboodle. Uh, kitten Caboodle, number 11, because I'm number one. I'm also number one. Easy money, because easy money. Dude, you know, uh, she's just pink. Yeah. Got a little air scoop in there, no problem, just a little air. And wow. Then, uh, that's pretty much it. Dude. I see you knocked out your grill. This see is how it came. I'm not sure. Oh. <laughs> I'm not really sure what happened there. Okay, so you got some airflow coming through, in and out the hood. Yeah, she's a good girl so far. We this is good. We, it. we talked a little bit. Yeah. She's good, dude. She's you going to take her to dinner after you win? Oh, yeah, dude. Nice seafood dinner. Nice seafood. <laughs> I hope that doesn't mean you're driving in the ocean. Stop it. <laughs> dude, this is a very pink car, man. Oh, yeah, she's pink. oh, this is the first car we've seen. You guys actually fully gutted the interior. No, this is how it was when we got, no way. We got dead serious. Your car really came gutted, there, huh? But, like, there was a lot of weird stuff going on in here, so I don't know. Well, no, frick. Man, we're going to roll with it. See what happens. Yeah, dude. Hey, can I get in on this? Yeah, just give a little. Get a little fresh rip? Oh. Hey, 
That's I got you. Dude, that's a hot pink section right there. Hey man. I did my deal. Done my part. And then you got old glory. I think that flag keeps getting bigger and bigger each year. <laughs> you guys started out with like a modest flag, now it's like almost at the ground. Uh, yeah, you're not lying, dude. It definitely gets bigger and bigger. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! Look hey! Like, dude, people of show, dude. Hey! People of show. Easy there. Yeah, oh my out, gosh. Out for us in the victory lane, dude. We're gonna be freaking just. Uh, uh, uh. Well, good. I hope so, man. Last time you here, you got in a boxing match halfway yeah, through, yeah, so yeah, hopefully none of that. All right, Nick Seuss. We'll see you, man. <laughs> Dude, I don't see many drivers out here. Let's, uh, oh, you know what? Let's uh, make it over here to, uh, oh, we, wow, you need that much more time? We need a lot of time covered. Ten more minutes. All right. We got the jack-o'-lantern vehicle here. All right, let's talk to, let's go over here and talk to Mr. Whistling Diesel. Last time, young, young, oh no, oh no, all right, did we, did we solve this helmet problem that you had last year? Oh, we solved that, <laughs> that, that was taken care of real quick, we, we just you fixed it, his helmet stolen, <laughs> yeah, I got my helmet stolen, and I was like, everyone's like, oh, you misplaced it, like always, oh, you just misplaced it, I, I, no, I didn't misplace that helmet, like, yeah, so uh, I said, I'm gonna find you, I can't say the rest. You know, you did a great job. That's perfect. That's perfect. I found him. What's most important is you have a new helmet that we're getting dialed in right I now. I have the flag on it, so I still have an issue with this person. <laughs> Anyways, anyway, I couldn't find one with the flag on it again. But um, So also, you got to point this out real quick. Yeah, let's take a look at your vehicle that you got going on, man. You still went with the jack-o'-lantern thing. And what does that say? <laughs> uh, if Whistle Diesel doesn't place last in the free 500, I'm going to cry to mama. So I, I just had to use their own quote against them. Oh, okay. So you're quoting some of the haters, huh? Oh, yeah. They said they were going to cry to mommy and all that. It was kind of weird. but. <laughs> oh. anyway, so well, good, that. man. I made that. But, uh, yeah, it's a General Lee, by the way. So I know. I keep getting it confused with the old jack-o'-lantern. Oh, but you yeah. do have the flag on the hood. Let's make it really clear. Yeah, let's make it really clear. You got the... The flag up top, you're, you're sporting the number one, same one you did last yeah. time, the General Lee. No, man, this thing looks good. I'm happy to have you back. You actually had a really quick lap time last time. I think it was the fourth fastest lap time of last race, wasn't it? Oh, yeah. Yep, somehow. But if, if I wouldn't have spun out, at first I was just kind of having fun, and then I realized I could have won if I wasn't messing around. So yeah. we're going to try to win. This well, that's good, man. I think you have a ton of actual like professional racers here yeah. so like i granted you are a professional at what you do but nobody's actually handed out checker flags at the end of every you know so i've never uh won any sort of race really so but i've never been in any race either so except hey, the last one but <laughs> so you've only lost races i've only lost races <laughs> yeah well let's see if we can change that today let's hope you don't go in last that way you don't have people crying home to mommy yeah, if and it's gonna be really awkward if I lose this, actually, because you got you got to be brave. You know, there's a risk with putting a, a cocky quote on there. So. <laughs> yeah, but we know you're not afraid of that, man. So thanks for coming out again, Cody. We appreciate you. All right, guys, we're gonna transition over now. This car was Haley Deegan's. It's our only female racer. It started off this color, but she came in and said, "You know what? That's not gonna do it for me." So she went with the full matte black paint theme. So they made some adjustments on it. I don't see any, uh, it looks like they gutted out the rear seat in there. Go a little with a little bit of a weight reduction. Oh, well look at this. I think we saw something like this in that old Ricky Bobby movie there where she is sponsoring her own vehicle and that looks like a, some sort of bear or a panther or a wild chihuahua, <laughs> a wild cat. <laughs> okay, oh yeah, Talladega Nights, that's right. Yeah, you had the wild cat in there. So. Hopefully that she doesn't put a live animal in her car while she's racing. That would not be safe. Okay. All right, Chris, let's go this way. Dude, all my drivers are pretty dialed in on their vehicles. Um, old Chelsea. Let's go to stop to Chelsea. If you guys saw in the driver's meeting, we had an issue with this guy last year doing his alignment, doing all sorts of modifications, trying to make his car faster. But uh, he got caught cheating last year, so I think he was quarantined into the pits over here. Let's get a word in with Chelsea. Dude. I mean, She's right here. Yeah, no, we want the Chelsea, the driver, not Chelsea. She drives. Not Chelsea, the rule maker. Chelsea, uh, the rule follower. Uh, but 
All right, guys, Chelsea Denofa here. We've seen him at the Burnout Rivals. He actually won two trophies at his last event I think here. I might be the most winningest person here still. That, that might be. I know Brent Levistad is high up there. up there. It's yeah. close. <laughs> but um, tell me what you got ready for us today. I know you haven't touched your car, but I did see you doing some gentle maintenance. It was a regular maintenance, uh, oil change, things like that. Yeah, 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 I didn't like do any modifications to it outside of some maintenance stuff. We want to make sure we make it to the race, so we put some Penn's oil in it and some NGK plugs and... Actually, what came out of there looked good and fine anyway, so really? we'll see how it goes. And I think everybody had their air filters taken out anyway, so I put a K&N filter in it. So, okay. you know, I'm trying to keep the motor together for this race. Mine was hurting after the last really? race. <laughs> yeah, was... So what happened? What place did you finish in the last race? I think it ended up being fifth, which we were just pumped to finish on the lead lap because we got four flats, I think it was. Wow. So we were back like seven laps, eight laps at one point, and we really? made it back and got into the lead lap. So, I mean, it was like a win in my book. You know, oh, our lap times were winning, so I'm just good with it. Yeah, finishing on the lead lap is usually one of the most rewarding yeah. feelings. I Seeing can't that believe there's that many people that finish on the lead lap. Like, yeah. it's a massive chaos out there. It's so fun. Yeah. Well, we're happy to have you back, man. You're honestly a really good racer. You're a great driver. You've been in the Formula Drift Series for how many years now? Nine years, yeah. Yeah, so you definitely are no shy competitor to the cameras, the fans, putting on a good show. But yeah, you actually weird. have um, one of your probably Formula Drift competitors. you got Ryan Turk here today. Do you have a special spot picked out for him or anything? You trying to pit him out or get you him out what? of competition? I think it will just be a win for him to finish the race in that car. <laughs> yeah. Because it's got some spaghetti noodle suspension components, <laughs> and we're out here driving F-150s with car bodies on them. So <laughs> I, think, I think we're going to end up doing just fine as long as he can finish. I think that it will be fun pit maneuvering him because he won't spin because of the front wheel drive. Yeah, that's so true. We'll but you also have such a larger weight compared to the – so I you think might it's gonna be fast. I'm not saying it's not gonna be fast. I no, think it might I'm, be faster than our cars. You're very you're very well could be correct. I think when it comes to the pit maneuvers, this car might just bounce off all the others and it'll yeah. be ping ponging through I think the it's field. Pretty quick, but I'm worried it's not gonna make the whole race. We'll see. Yeah. Well it'll be a true test to what Toyota brings to the table I now mean, that there's no way anyone's gonna let him win though either. <laughs> I mean let's be real. Yeah. No one's gonna let a Camry win the Freedom yeah. Five. Well if it starts getting really sketchy, we're in the last like twenty laps or so, I'll go hijack the race director's mic and I'll let everybody know full target $500 bounty on the Corolla Perfect. I'm in sign me up all right man well thanks for coming yeah we'll have you ow dude your wedding ring that hurt <laughs> ow <laughs> I'm delicate yo Wilkie what's up buddy dude my boy back back again we got Blake Wilkie here guys with the shreddy life he was actually one of our he was the fastest lap holder, I believe. Oh, no, Garrett had the fastest lap in the first Freedom 500, but you had the second fastest lap out there. So it's awesome to see you back here, man. You're very, very quick. Um, what are you thinking about being up against some actual professional drivers? It's the, the field is so stacked, you know. I mean, racing against Travis, we had a little bit of fun last night, and uh, Heavy D and Chelsea, you know. Um, dude, there's just – it's crazy, man. I mean – Never thought I'd be racing against NASCAR drivers and Formula Drift drivers, monster truck drivers. You know, um, Haley Deegan. She's she's the only lady racing, and she's a she's a threat to be you know reckoned with. So, man, it's it's <laughs> yeah, it's gonna be really exciting to see because we have such a diverse skill set. We have people that are just putting out solid content every month. We have people that are actually winning trophies, taking home golds for huge, like, publicly owned race teams. So we have, like, this huge swath of creativity, skill set, but definitely no stranger with Blake Wilkie here in the building. Going to put down some heater laps. What are you thinking? Where are you thinking you're going to finish? Are you going to try to give it all for qualifying, start at the front of the field, give yourself a best shot? Because my theory is that with all these skill sets, the, the skill-packed field, it's going to be a lot harder to make some solid passes. That's that's true. I'm gonna I'm shooting for a top five. You know, roughly fourth, third place would be ideal. Um, my first half of the race, I'm gonna be cruising though. I mean, there's gonna be a lot of cautions. We'll kind of let people figure out their cars, try to stay out of any carnage. Last 20 laps is where this race will be won. You hear that, folks? The last 20 laps is exactly where this race will be won. Blake Wilkie going with the the method of vehicle preservation, save his tires, definitely save his transmission, and it sounds like he might be saving that nitrous bottle for the very end. So, Blake, good luck out there, man. I'm rooting for you. All right, we'll see you. All right, let's go get ourselves. Ooh, I know exactly the man. Brent, can I borrow you for a second? Hey, bud. I'm, I'm downwind of this paint job, so yeah. I'm getting a little dizzy, but hey. guys, 
I think you guys all at home know exactly who this is. We got Brent <laughs> Levstad from PFI Speed. Just made a beautiful appearance in Houston in the Mystery Machine, which that we can talk about that some other time. But yeah, yeah. tell us about your strategy today, man. You are you are a, 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 a seasoned veteran at the Freedom Factory. What do you have planned for us today? I'm going to take it easy for a bit. And okay. then when it's time, my... Uh Dude's gonna tell me to go, and I'm gonna go. I'm gonna turn it up. Now you said my dude. Yeah. Do you mean like your race director, your it's, team captain? What are you? Yeah. Who's your dude? Jamie? Yeah. All right, man. So you're helping him out. You guys got a comm set up. We got a comm set, so Always. he tells me where I need to be and what's going on, and so I can rip. Yeah. So that you guys did that last time. Do you guys find that to have been a great advantage having a uh, somebody Absolutely. to? Really? Absolutely. Someone talking you through it. There's yeah. a lot of stuff you don't see on the track. You don't always know what cars are lapped cars, so half the time you're racing a car that's a laps down. Yeah, that's a good point. I mean, you guys got to remember, for those of you at home that don't actually watch consistently NASCAR series or any professional racing, these guys always have their team captains are giving them direction when they're out on the field, letting them know who to pass, when to let go, when to let somebody buy it because they're a lap driver. So this has, been a, this has been a winning method for you guys. How many yeah. wins do you have here on the Cletus McFarland channel, whether it's at the Freedom Factory or any of the Cletus and Cars events? I think around seven. Seven victories. Okay, oh, yeah. how about here on the Oval? How many have you ever won any events at the Oval? I, I won the La Mullet, so. Well, and the oh, and Burnout Rivals burnout here. Rivals here so. Okay, guys, That's so we actually have too. the last pay per view race that we had at the Freedom Factory was Brent at the winning position uh, for the 2.4 hours of Lay Mullets, and he won in reverse. It was honestly one of the most glorious finishes we could ever could have wished for, planned for, but it was amazing. So I'm very excited to see you pull it together, man. This is going to be a fast car. What number are you? 144. 144. And the reason I'm 144 yeah. is my buddies didn't get to race with me this time. So I added up all their numbers and I came up with 144. And Damn. So I got my homies with Dude, them. one of the best things ever since I met you, you got a huge heart, bro. I, I I, I'm that. happy to be in your friend group. But I think I saw a sticker on here that says, I love librarians yeah. or libraries. <laughs> oh. I love libraries, yeah. Well, dude, librarians are my. <laughs> what's wrong with librarians? Nothing at all, honestly. Well, why libraries? Well, they're doing a documentary on libraries and uh, sports. Is now. there a documentary coming out on librarians? I hope so. All right. Well, I hope I so, too. Later, yeah, dude, I'll see you at Harkins Theater. You and I will be front row seat. <laughs> I'll, I'll sit behind you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brad, you have a good one. Be safe, brother. Oh, my goodness. Who we got? Jared. What's what up, up, buddy? What's up, dog? Mr. DeAnda, guys. Up? One of my co-hosts, my co-conspirators, my... Sure. Partners in crime. We got Jared DeAnda, the voice of Formula Drift, and many other outlets. But how are you doing today, man? Thank you for coming out all the way from LA to help us put on this amazing show. Dude, super pumped to be here. Freedom Factory, having people in the stands, everybody tuning in, watching. I get to co announce with you and Larry Mack. Larry McReynolds, the legend, dude. He's here. And look at just the diverse amount of people. Some people you see him on the internet and seeing people interact, and it's so rad. Like the diversity is just to be celebrated. Yeah. I mean, it really puts a whole testament just hearing everybody say the positive things. We got to have a big shout out and a thank you to Cletus Dude. just for putting this talent together before us. For us, just the viewing pleasure, uh, just for the fans at home, the fans here in the stands. Yep. And I know you were here, you actually co uh, hosted with me Burnout the Burnout Rivals. Yep. And it was just crazy. We were super excited, but there was nobody in the stands. <laughs> and so we're going nuts. Yeah. And there's just like crickets. It's like it's, it's like if you were a stand up comedian and you had a bad night. Yeah. But boo. <laughs> boo. Now, dude, Cletus, and, and, and I think I saw, I saw him shed a tear in the driver's meeting. I think this is a dream coming true for him. I mean, he, I, I saw him and Travis do an interview, and he says, I always wanted my number to be 199, but if Travis ever shows up, I'd have to change my number. So respectfully, he didn't choose 199, and here it is. Travis yeah. Pastrana, I mean, the modern-day evil Knievel is amongst us, and just all the personalities, yourself included, the party. I mean, tickets sold out like that. So if you're watching, remember, this is just, you get a front-row seat, man. It's, yeah. it's sick. 100 laps, 19 Vicks, Crown Vicks. One, one Toyota Camry. One Toyota Camry. <laughs> I love it. It's just like, yeah. don't, don't leave the How do you think Turk's going to do? Do you think the Me? camera's going to survive? I mean, honestly, it's hard to say. I think that car's lighter. He might get pushed around like a bumper car. It might be more nimble. He might be able to dodge some of the right. lap traffic, some of the debris in the road. It's hard to say. I he's mean, a pinata among anvils. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> these things are machines, right? And he's just going to get punts it off. There's no candy. It's just a cute little sweet Ryan Turk inside. So, yeah, I think it's a yeah. pinata, man. We're, yeah. we're going to see. It's going to be interesting, man. I'm it's, super pumped. It's going to be an awesome time, man. Well, I'm super excited to have you in the announcer's booth with yeah. America's crew chief, like you said, Larry Mac Reynolds. Um, but it's going to be a great time. So, guys, Thank you so much for joining us. Stay tuned. Get your Mountain Dew. Go to the fridge. Put some ice cubes in that pint glass. Pour one deep. 
and we're going to have a really great time here today at the Freedom Factory for the very second Freedom 500. The Freedom Factory is open for business. Make some noise, Freedom Factory attendees all around the world tuning in. We are making history for the second time ever, and man, this is going to be an event. I'm Jared Diana, and I have the pleasure of an look. You even have it on your shirt. You have your own <laughs> shirt. America's crew chief, Larry Mack. Awesome to be here, and to great. And it's an honor, a privilege to work with you, man. It's a pleasure to work with you. You and I, we've done so much together, but to have the weather that we have. To have these 20 drivers and to have the crowd we've got here at Freedom Factory. Yeah. Look at that. We are ready to send it, lick the stamp and send it, and we kick things off. So if you're just tuning in, which you all are, tell your friends, come on, wake up your family, let's party. We're going to send it. So we kick things off with qualifying. We have five groups, four vehicles. You'll get that warm up lap, and then green means go. They got two laps to be the fastest qualifier, and here we go, baby. And you wouldn't think, okay, 100 laps, 20 drivers, what is qualifying? I mean, you want to start up front, start out in front of the eye of the storm. Oh, so speaking about front, we got Blake Wilkie. He's in that black, uh, the number 357. You got Adam LZ in the 05, Tanner Faust in the bright yellow, number 34, and then Sean Murder Nova. Of course, 187 is the message that they gave me. So here we go. So again, we're going to go hot and heavy, two laps. Who's going to be the fastest? Blake Wilkie throws down his lap, so this is he's got one lap in the books. We got to get our scoring and timing up here and see what we're going to see from these racers. What can you expect, Larry? What are you expecting throughout today's event? Well, what I'm already seeing is some of these drivers overdriving the corner. These are 4,500 pound Crown Vicks. They are not <laughs> race cars. They are most of them are retired police cars. But I was watching. Adam LZ in the 05 car, a little different approach. He kind of arcs it in there, but yeah. it, right now you've got the one car, the 187, Sean Murder Nova is all in the way. Of course, that's the end of round one right there anyhow. Yeah, that, that is a wrap. And I saw Tanner Faust, you know, he is a, a world champion drifter, rallycross racer. He got sideways over there. All right, so we got number 34 with a 19.805 with a 20.1153. So the car number 34, Tanner Faust, with the fastest time of that group. And that man has raced everything <laughs> known to man, right. but he told me today this is the first time on an asphalt oval. So not too bad of a start there. No, not too bad. And it bears repeating, if you're just tuning in, 20 vehicles, 19 of which are Crown Vicks, and one is Toyota Camry. <laughs> Ryan Turk, look, he contractually pilots Toyotas in the Formula Drift Series. He's building that brand new Formula Supra. It's a beautiful vehicle with his Judd V10. Woo! But he says, look, I'll come, but Cleeter, you got to buy me a Camry. Well, here's the caveat. It's only one Camry. Now, there are six spares cars, right. but they are all Crown Vicks. So if something ha happens to Ryan Turk, he has no other Camry. He's done for the night. One so. and done. That's, and and uh, in the driver's meeting, Travis Mastrana said, can I just prep the, prep the backup car now? Because I, I know. <laughs> Making I know plans. Him Making uh, plans. Yeah, he, he knows himself all too well, right? Speaking of TP, Travis Pastrana in the number 199. We got James. James, get the toolbox. Jack Stan, Jimmy. All right, Randy Popes. Man, the legend. The car 3113. And then Kevin of KSR in the number 78. Oh, excuse me. No, here. Well, wow, we're moving on. Sorry, that wrong group. Uh, we got this group. Alex Bowman, which you're very familiar with. Number 88, Chelsea Denopa. Denofa, excuse me. You got the Vice Grip Garage. I like their livery, the camo. And then you got Sue, the SXS blog. So the side-by-side -side blog, guys. So let's go down there to Spence. I think he's got something down in the infield for us. Guys, I'm here in the pits. We just got done with the first group from qualifying. We got Blake Wilkie out here. Now, Blake, you've done many laps here before, but how do you think you did here today? Um, definitely, you know, just getting thrown right into the mix. I think uh, I could have set a faster time, but uh, this car handles so much different. The gearing is different from my last one, so even though I've been here before, there's still other challenges that always seem to pop up, so. Got it, so we're hearing that, guys, it's not necessarily just a track and get a feel for it, that every vehicle has its variables. Remember, some of these police cruisers have 70,000 miles on it, all the way up to 160,000 miles. So we got Sean from Murder Nova. Sean, how did you do out there? It's your first time at the Oval. How do you think you did qualifying? I don't have, I, I 
honestly have no idea. I know he was right on my ass, so obviously I didn't go as fast as this guy did. But Got it. I, I don't know, it was the first time. I'm kind of trying to get a feel for everything, and okay. uh, it was definitely loose out there. Yeah. yeah, I'm sure it was. Remember, this is not a race car like you're used to. These are loose and ready to set, get loose. So um, let's go. Yeah, absolutely. We got Adam LZ, a returning competitor here at the Freedom Factory. How'd you do out there, man? Felt pretty good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. We'll see when the numbers show up. Yeah, that's true. The proof is in the pudding, and what I mean by that is in the numbers. So we're going to head back to Jared DeAnda and Larry Mack here in the booth. But thank you, Adam. We're excited to see how you finished. Thank you. LZ definitely gets style points, likes the paint job. Let's look at some of these times here. Look at that. Bowman and Tanner. How, how, how close is that? 19.7 and 19.8. Bowman got loose out there, too. Yeah, and, and we do think Alex Bowman is probably going to be the favorite in that 48 car. He ran the uh, 2.4 hour of La Mullets. In fact, he won the first stage when he was in the car. Cletus McFarlane, not so good in stage <laughs> number two. But right. that, I tell you, I am very impressed with Tanner Faust because, yeah. again, raced everything under the sun and moon, but never on an oval, especially in a 4,500 pound Crown Vic. The Crown Vic, the interceptor. And, and I, you were talking about these are retired cop cars. You can still see Orlando police on the back. Tampa yeah. police. You yeah. can still see it kind of ghosted in there. And all the drivers had the opportunity to put their you know custom touches on there. But they weren't allowed to do anything other than just check the tire pressure. But supposedly they're all at 30 PSI. They're all on Nitto tires. Again, 19 Crown Vics. Don't change anything. And I tell you what, Chelsea Denofa, he was underneath his vehicle. He was he underneath it. When we got here yeah. early this morning. That's right. But Spence brings up something interesting, and that's the different mileage on mm -hmm. the cars. I mean, that can make a huge difference. And the other thing I learned today, they're automatic transmissions, and you want to keep it in second gear. You don't want to run drive or mm -hmm. what we would call third gear. You want to race, go to first for a restart, go to second, mm -hmm. and stay in second gear. The transmissions probably won't last shifting down, shifting on its own if you put it in drive. Yeah, and, and that, that's something that, that Cletus just – Kind of put it out there for the drivers. Hey, this is this is my approach. I recommend you do that. Turk, you have to fend for yourself. I don't know anything about a Camry. So here we go with this. Is qualifying. Alex, how do you The number 199, Travis Pastrana. James, get the toolbox. He's got the bush light on the hood. He's looking for that endorsement. And, of course, we'll see if he's got some cold bushes after the event. Then Randy Popes, a legend, an icon in the road racing world. He's got, to, you can see the sticker there, the flying moose. The moose is loose. And rounding out this four-pack here is Kevin of KSR and the 78. Here we go. Send it. Yeah, the 03 James Tall, he's known as Cletus McFarlane's human tool, toolbox. Get I the think toolbox. whatever Cletus needs done on these cars, He's there. James is there to do it. Who's pulling for James out there? Make some noise, Freedom Factory. I mean, come on. You got the icon, 199. Both thumbs up. Make some noise for these racers. Let's get loud. It's great to see some smiling faces. Clutch kicking and taking some names. Here we go. All right. Green means go. James out front. I'm really anxious to see how Travis Pastrana. Oh, look at that. We're in car. In that, in that 199, how he actually does. I mean, he, he has a lot of old experience. Ran Xfinity Series in NASCAR. Actually ran a truck race at Las Vegas last year. Yeah, he's obviously very talented on two wheels, four wheels, and sometimes even on the roof. Um, we're not going to see a backflip from him in this Crown Vic, but you can, you can see him really find that wheel. And as smiles and thumbs up as Travis is, he wants to win. He is, he is more competitive than, than most people in the, in, in, on the planet, man. Look at this. So in car with Travis, and there we go. We can see him out of the car. What do you think? What kind of times are we going to look for here? Again, the fastest so far is Alex Bowman with that 19.7. Pastrana looks awfully good. He loses the nose a little bit. Uh, car doesn't turn late exit of the corner, and I'm sure that hurts his straightaway speed as well. All right, so it looks like they get a full pull here. Travis still got a smile on his face, and there you go. Kevin with K of KSR. Let's see what kind of times we're going to see here. One thing about Travis Pastrana, this man has fun when he does his laundry. He has fun. <laughs> it doesn't matter. The man has fun whatever he does. Right, right. He's, he's definitely a, a fun-loving dude. I'm looking at uh, what, what vehicle number is that? I believe that is 78. So Kevin of KSR with a 19.7. So look at that. Uh, maybe even surprising himself, but as fast as Bowman. But the, the fastest from each group, Jared, they, they're very, very close, very tight. Mm -hmm. We still have two more groups. Again, four drivers per group, two more groups to qualify. And here comes <laughs> old 411, that Toyota Camry, Ryan Turk. What, what is the 411 <laughs> with the Toyota Camry? I love it. Ryan is, is super excited. You know, came in last night, went to Cletus's house, and just everybody's having a hoot, man. 
He just hopes it's not 911. It stays 411. Fact. Yeah. Fact. For and right sure. now, it's it's a sunroof. A little later on in the evening, it'll be a moonroof. So you get <laughs> see what I did there? I definitely <laughs> did. All right. So you got the 144 of Brent PFI Speed. A lot of money on him. I mean, he has a lot of success here at Freedom Factory. And again, the 401 Ryan Turk in the lone Toyota, Toyota Camry. Heavy D in the 801. See him right there. And then the 07. Ooh, that thing is bright. And that is Taylor Ray. All right, so fans here, if we could have fans, please move together in the stands where there is open areas. So uh, we'd appreciate that. So, again, if you have open areas, please move to those as we get set for our next qualifying group. Who's your money on? Yeah, that 144, uh, Brent PFI Speed, mm -hmm. Brent Livingstad. You know, he, he was winner of the 2.4 hour of LaMullets back right. in November, led some laps in this Freedom 500 a year ago, so I, I definitely think he's one to watch. I think he's going to be money tonight. He's giddy. I mean, he, he was just – he's just happy to be here. And he's like, I, I'm just – I'm kicking – I'm pinching myself. He, he just absolutely loves it. He even spray painted on the truck and says, this is awesome. That's this, <laughs> that just gives you any idea or indication of how excited Brent is. So here we go. And that's an interesting approach because, like, uh, like Murder Nova said, Adam LZ was right on him. So he threw up a roadblock. Maybe give yourself some space there, Brent, so you're not up on the back – of the 801 of Heavy D. And that's what he's doing now. Yeah, yeah to, if nothing else, Jared, to me, it would be a distraction if, right. you're, if you're trying to follow another car. So he definitely opened the space up there before he's going to start his lap. All right, Heavy D coming in hot in that 801. And there we go. So, Brent, let's see what kind of pace we got here. And and you know what? Does, does Ryan take a different strategy here? Because nobody knows. That car has not gone around the track at all. We've seen Crown Vicks here at Freedom Factory. But a little, little breaking there. What, what do you think strategy-wise? Yeah, it, it, these cars, now I know the Crown Vicks, they tend to be loose getting in the corner. The back end wants to come around. And, and I saw that 411 Ryan Turk very loose getting into turn three, very tight. Car did not want to turn coming off turn four. Well, you got to think, front-wheel drive, rear-wheel drive. There's a, there's a variance there. There so, is, you know, no I mean, question. The, the, the Camry is front-wheel drive. He's coming in hot. He's throwing up some dust there as we get the checkered flag for this qualifying session. See what kind of times we get. And there is Ryan Turk. <laughs> Almost I, felt like Ryan's trying to run too low, mm. getting down in toward the middle of the corner, and it upsets his exit speed. Okay. Yeah, Ryan Turk, known for drifting, competes in the Formula Drift Championship, and the 144. So, as, uh, as you predicted, but look at that 20.1. So, the slowest. Of of the of the, the fastest the, of the slowest. There you go. That's, <laughs> thank you. Thank you for finishing my sentence there. Thank you for finishing my sentence. Yeah, that's a good three or four tenths off of some of the faster cars in those first three groups. All right. So here we go. As oh, excuse me. Actually, no, that was incorrect. It's four one one. Ryan Turk is the fastest. Got some. Uh, got some. Got my numbers mixed up. So four one one. Ryan Turk. But he's still the fastest of the slowest. The fastest of the slowest. <laughs> yes, yes. Still yes. the fastest of the slowest. <laughs> Oh, man, I hope you guys are having fun out there. I know we are. Larry Mack, I'm Jared Dienda. we got Spicy Spence down on the ground. He's wrapping up with our drivers and our, our pilots of these 20 weapons of mass destruction, killing some Nitto tires. This is the Summit Racing Equipment Freedom 500 here at the now infamous Freedom Factory. Like I said, it's a pleasure to be here with you and just wrapping out. And like we said, you know, didn't, didn't sell to max capacity, wanted some room for flexibility, yeah. practicing kind of social distance. But the line, dude. They were here at, what, 10, 10 o'clock this morning? I know I got here a little after 12 noon, mm -hmm. and they were lined up on the highway about a half a mile down the road waiting yeah. to get in here. And you uh, maybe accuse us of a lot of things before the night's over, but not having fun will not be one of them. I can promise you that. Uh, we're going to party, man. We are definitely going to party. Here we go with uh, with our next group. So we are in car with Cleeter. There he is, the number 99. There he is. Hell yeah, brother. There we go. You can see the stars and stripes on his big old skid lid. You got Whistling Diesel in the 01, Diesel Dave in the number 435, and rounding out the only female here in competition, number 62, Haley Deegan. They're kind of bunched up right yeah. now. You see Whistling Diesel in that 01. His claim is he just loves to break things. <laughs> <laughs> he came to the right place. He is a diverse personality online. He drove his uh, turbocharged R8 uh, Audi over there. I mean, it's just a... You know, he's about 100 pounds soaking wet, so we'll see if that comes to his advantage. But we know how ta how much talent is actually out there with Cletus McFarlane out front of the 99. We can see him kind of pedaling, maybe holding Haley Deegan back. 
You can see her awesome livery here. That might be a good strategy. It might not. Is Haley going for the pass? Yes, we're she qualifying. is. I mean, we're qualifying. But I'm going to tell you what. Whistling di diesel. Oh, boy. What is happening This is right not now. supposed to happen in qualified. Oh. <laughs> oh, no. What has, what has unfolded? Haley Deegan, whistling diesel, going for it, sending it, coming up on the bank. Oh, we got drifting action. Oh, baby. Take slapper, Lori. I just don't Lori. know if I've ever seen this in qualifying. <laughs> <laughs> it's qualifying, guys and girls. Wow. Zero <laughs> chill, whistling. Whistling, sliding. And it looks like to me Cletus McFarlane. Wait. Real quick, real quick, I hate to interrupt you, but the, the light was on on the trunk. That means that he yes. engages nitrous. So, again, we'll talk about this throughout the night, especially as we get into nighttime. They have a limited supply of nitrous yep. oxide. It's about 90 seconds yep. worth. And you can use it in qualifying, but when you're using it, that yellow light on the deck lid is on. You, it's hard to see it in the daylight, so that was interesting. He was He was – whistling that thing down in the corner <laughs> all that calamity all things said and done whistling diesel in the 01 has a <laughs> forgot to tell them that this is actually qualifying because he just about hit everything but the Florida Lottery. <laughs> <laughs> yeah oh my goodness and Haley Deegan came out unscathed I thought she was going to get into it with Whistling Diesel there, but uh, not the case. So qualifying's over, just like that. Again, two laps, the fastest so far. As you said, Alex Bohm with that 19.7. Um, again, Whistling Diesel, the uh, the fastest of that group there. Woo! Yeah. Oh, that, man. That was a tight qualifying session. And I was going to say, Cletus McFarlane in the 99, I'm not sure if something happened to his car or he just said, to hell with this. <laughs> I, <laughs> I want to save my car for the green flag of this race. Yeah, exit stage left, make sure I, I come out unscathed. We'll, we'll see. I mean, you know what? Cletus is a creative individual. He might, put, might be pulling some strategy here. Even though this is his house, he has won. I think, I, think, I think he's sandbagging. But I will say, that's not what I expected to see in that final round of no. qualifying at all because we almost had to go, and we have, again, we have six backup cars, mm -hmm. and you can only use one. That's right. Whistling that's right. Diesel and Haley Deegan were close to using one before we even started the race. Qualifying already done just like that. I'm going to rattle off uh, our number one qualifier, Alex Bowen, with that 19.71. Then you got KSR Kevin, second. Tanner Faust qualifies third. Uh, you got the Vice Grip Garage gentlemen, 1984. So they qualified fourth there. And then we got uh, Whistling Diesel, Randy Popes, Travis Pastrana qualifies seventh. Ryan Turk in the lone in Camry, the Camry qualifies in the eighth. Camry. Yep. And then uh, you got Haley Deegan qualifying ninth. You got the side by side blogs uh, rounding out top 10. And then who do we have? here uh, 11 through 20. Yeah, we've got uh, LZ Adam. We got him 11th. James Tall, the human toolbox. toolbox. <laughs> yeah, he's going to start 12th. Chelsea Denofa, 13th. PFI Speed Brent will 14th. Ooh. Blake Wilkie will be 15th. Dave Heavy will be 16th. Taylor Ray will be 17th. Dave Diesel, 18th. Mm -hmm. Cletus McFarlane. There's only one way to go for Cletus in that 99 <laughs> car. He's going to start 19th. And Shotgun will be Sean Murder Nova. Some yep. of these drivers only got one lap in, That's including right. Cletus McFarlane. So, yeah. interesting way they're scattered through the field here to, before we take the green flag. Yeah, I'm really, I'm really wondering what's going on with Cletus's car. Uh, maybe he's going to already go to his backup. So, wow. Yeah, so awesome uh, experience so far. We're going to have our national anthem opening ceremonies here in just a little bit, Larry. But uh, – Awesome, again, just to see that. If that's, if that's just a, a taste of a shape of things to come, a little blooming Onion appetizer there, we're going to get a full-on filet mignon later, man. If you're seeing that in two laps of qualifying, absolutely. Yeah. What are we going to see in 100 green flag laps? Cautions do not count. All right, so when we come back here, Freedom Factory Summit Racing Equipment, Freedom 500 continues here at the one, the only Freedom Factory. Dude. Test one, two. Yeah, okay, just uh, checking here in the pits. Text Mike, Mike test, Mike testing one, test Mike. Limo, boys, let's rip. All right, all right. So I'm here in the pits with Cletus right after his uh, qualifying lap. But, dude, I couldn't see it, but all I heard was shouting and yelling. What happened? My qualifier was fine, dude. Haley and Whistlin are like, I look over. Whistling's 
high side, completely sideways. <laughs> She's trying to dodge it, dude. He's tank slapping back to the top of the track, back to the bottom. Finally, he goes full spin in qualifying. We almost had a two-car pileup, like a... Like, if they would have hit, it would have definitely disabled both cars from racing further. Oh, my Somehow, gosh. Somehow, they dodge each other, and it was amazing. But I don't know how the qualifying ended up. I'm really curious to see yeah. how Camry did. It's going to be interesting because I talked to a lot of drivers, and they all don't know how they did because the new track surface, the new vehicles, don't things are different. Out, dude. Yeah, it's going to be crazy. <laughs> Let's go! Fire up! All right, so were you one of the ones that almost got in a wreck? I think I was the one in the middle of it. Okay, so you got to get over here, bud. <laughs> We got Innocent Bike Center. I heard the crowd going nuts. We got Whistling Diesel right here. What the hell happened, dude? My car doesn't run very well with, without nitrous, so I just held down the whole time, pretty much. So, so you went all nitrous bottle in the entire qualifying. I, I thought I could hold it sideways around the whole track, but it, it went overboard a little bit. But <laughs> That's crazy. So that's why I heard the crowd losing their mind, going nuts. You almost crashed. Is that right? I did. Did I do good? We don't know. I don't think you got it. <laughs> and so Haley, from your point of view, you were just in the middle of it. You almost yeah. got wrecked into. Yeah, I had Cletus in front of me. He was riding pretty good, but I got I got up to his bumper. I was like, you know, what? I'm just gonna I'm gonna go easy to his inside, try to pass him and get a decent lap still. And he went up the track. I was like, okay, cool. I went on him, and then he's on the inside of me, hits me in the left rear, and I was like, oh my god, I shot him towards someone. You hit me. I got one question. Do you ever watch any of the stuff he puts out? Yes. yes okay, it so makes you sense. know. It makes so sense. when you knew you were in his qualifying group, you're kind of like nail biting already, I like. I think that's in every qualifying group. You're nail biting with <laughs> yeah, everyone. Very true. <laughs> yeah, it's a wild group out here, but it's fun. It that's awesome. Well, good job. I'm glad he's going to make it to the start of the race. Yes. That's the last thing we need you starting from the pits. <laughs> Come on, dude. You got to chill a little, bro. You got 100 laps to I need, do. I need more nitro, so. You need more? I don't think, I think the, the rules say you only get 10 pounds. Did you use all 10? You can take half my gas away and just replace it with a nitrous bottle. All right, let me get to the officials and see what they can pull. But, all right, let's come over here to Tanner Faust. We got Heavy D. How'd you guys do, man? How's it going? It felt good. I was kind of by myself out there. Really? Yeah, I didn't. My race wasn't as eventful as theirs, apparently. Well, yeah, that's good, though, because in qualifying, it's not supposed to I crash. What you're supposed to do in qualifying is just crash. No, 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 no. You have 100 laps to go after qualifying. Tanner, how'd you do out there, bud? I, I mean, first couple laps in an oval, I felt pretty good, I think. Like, it's amazing how different three and four are compared to one and two. Like yeah. Three and four has a new patch and uh, of asphalt, which is really grippy. We were just talking about it. And the other one's really bumpy, one and two. So, you know, it just kind of skates and burns. I didn't touch any nitrous yet, so I'm excited to see what's you know like. that. You meme where the math problems are going through that lady's head? <laughs> yeah, that's that's, that's right. him. Every time he sees oh, he at the track, he's literally calculating what to do. And he's calculating shading seconds off his time. Yeah. Well, dude, I think I see a lab coat underneath his fire yeah, suit. Like and a PhD. This, right? Then it's like, <laughs> yeah, then that's, it just that's turns into, yeah, right that's what's going to happen. a driver right. you are. How no. kind of a dodger you are today. It's going to be big. Yeah. Honestly, you know, like I couldn't have done what Haley did, which was have the presence when he came drifting on the inside just to break and let him go all the way to the wall. Yeah. Like well, I, that's good defensive driving. I mean, a lot of racing is playing the defense. You can't always be on the go because you'll burn your tires, you'll burn your vehicle up. So it sounds like you two played it cool, which might be the long strategy to at least finish on the, on the final lap with everybody else. The last thing you want to do is be 10 or 12 laps down at the end of the race. So... That's it for me, guys, here. Spicy Spence in the pits. We had Heavy D, Tanner Faust. We got a lot of drivers. They're getting the cars lined up. But stay tuned. Stay lit. It's about to get spicy. Wow. So wait, what what is going on here? Oh, we got we got VIPs who's showing up. Is the president this here? What's is going not on? The run of show, and I think one of those <laughs> is actually my ride back to the airport in the morning. So. Okay. <laughs> I like it. Wait, is it the chop top? Look at this pit viper insanity, and then of course it's being led. Got a brand new crate engine under the hood of that Summit Racing Equipment van. But I, I it's oh hey FYI, it's for sale. There you go, Larry. The Pit Viper. That's yep. my ride. That's, That's my ride. ride to the airport in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and I've seen the Juke Squad fellows out there. And uh, I, I, I don't know who's piloting. I believe JH is obviously pilot one, the one with JH Diesel 4x4. Uh, I believe another one is piloted by Ronnie Renner, 
the uh, the two wheel legend lives here in Florida and he's having a good time. I believe Blake Wilkie, but this was not on our schedule. What is going on here? This this ought to be very very interesting because this puts a whole new meaning to long wheelbase. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <laughs> if long wheelbase is good, they they got it right here. So we got bathtub versus the camo limo, and I you know what. I'm he I'm hearing in my ear now. They're gonna race. They're gonna do a 10 lap race. There's the so green flag. Go. All right, so it's go time. Let's send it. All right, who are you pulling for? I know Renner's out there. I believe Blake Wilkie's piloting one. Yeah, Blake's in the shreddy one. I believe I got my, my money on the chop Ooh. top pit viper. Yeah. He's rubbing. He's got got less upper weight, okay. lower center of gravity. But it might just split in half. So. Hopefully it doesn't get into a tussle, and there we go. We got Rubin is racing. They are too wide coming into turn. Now, if one of these cars spins out and blocks a straightaway, it'll be like that cargo ship down in the, in the canal. Oh, the, the Suez Completely canal. blocked. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, look at that. The JH Diesel gets on the back bumper of, I mean, is, is the car bending? It's looking more like a banana than a I'm bathroom. telling you, he's got her hung Whoa. out now. He has her hung out. Yes, sir. Look at this. Oh, man. He is fighting the wheel. He's going to split that thing in two. He is. Oh, not. send it, baby. Look at that. Getting sideways. He is not shaking. J.H. Diesel moves to the inside. Ooh. We got a block on the back straightaway. Dives in and does the full body block. Sends it sideways. And J.H. gets that position back. Yeah, he's going to. He's oh, going to. Well, he comes back. The grass. Is that Ronnie? Uh, that would be that's, called that's a shortcut. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I mean. Rule one is you got to.